Hello, hello, hello. What's up? What's up? What's up, mga Chimek? No, how are you after the storm? Uh, hopefully you are fine. Uh, currently, just to share, wala pa rin sa aming internet after 22, 23 days. And yan, so I'm recording using my phone and I'll try to upload this via data. Hopefully, you know, uh, I can upload it in a bit. Well, anyways, uh, for today's session, we are going to talk about the most important table in the universe. And when I say that it is the most important table in the universe, I am not exaggerating, nor I'm not saying it figuratively. I am saying it literally, you know, the elements you know, that compose the universe. So before all of that, uh, hora, you know, uh, let me ask you first. When you're trying to find a book in the library, how do you locate that particular book? Hopefully, you have your answer right now. No, If it's uh, probably a fiction book, when I was in first year, second year, I loved going to library. No, I miss O'Brien. Library third floor. Uh, aside from sleepy, sleeping there, because the aircon, no, I'd love reading Dan Brown's book, no? Da Vinci Code, Inferno, Angels and Demons, particularly the Digital Fortress. No? That was the last book I read. No? To find that book, you have to look by the author since the fiction materials are filed no? by the author's last name. Magkakatabitab sila. If you are looking naman for probably a non-fiction book for your study, you can look in a catalog. Most likely, si computer natin na si opac system or opic the book you are looking for will of course have a number by the title or you can simply ask the beautiful librarian there anyways uh yan uh this uh number system was developed by Dewey no by Melville Dewey which we call the Dewey decimal system uh, other library would have another system, no? Some other Western world, no? Western library would use Library of Congress approach. No, uh, in any case, uh, th this make the library, no? the books in the library particularly organized, no? Kesa parang ukay ukay ang dating. Uh, this method is uh, used. No, these two methods particularly are used around the world. And both approaches organize information so that people can easily find what they are looking for. So in chemistry, information also needs to be organized so we can see patterns of properties in elements. So hopefully uh, you get a glimpse. Why is it important? No? Some of you, as again I've been reading the expectations and your answers what you hate about chemistry what you i mean what do you not like the best no what do you like least some of you answer the periodic table because you have trauma of memorizing it but again this is very important no so for today's session with the wind rustling and i don't know if you can hear it we are going to trace the history of the creation of the periodic table of elements because, of course, it does not appear in an instant. To identify the parts, you know, what are designs, colors, the ladders, legends, etc., etc., of the periodic table of elements, and then distinguish the different periodic trends. So, currently, this is our uh, modern. No? We call it modern periodic table of elements. Why do we call it modern? Because in the early times, there have been several periodic table of elements. So this is now our periodic table of elements with uh, different colors. And until 118, OG, the organeson, uh, some if your periodic table are still in UU something, UUQ, UUU, UUX, UUU, it's always you. <laughs> 
uh, that's not yet the modern periodic table. And bakit sa may mga ganyan na uh, uh, notation? Uh, later on, we'll try to discuss that. So, by the year uh, 1700s, no, even earlier, no, only a handful of elements had been identified. And they were isolated, of course. No? Several of these, yung mga common, in our wires, copper, of lead, gold, silver, no, our use, uh, used for our coins no, before, our monetary system. Several of these are already identified and noted. No? And of course, uh, as time goes by, scientific improves. Our method particularly improved. And the rate of discovery of the elements dramatically increased. So, madami nang na-discover, such as calcium, tellurium, iodine, etc., etc. With the ever-increasing number of these elements, chemists recognize that Maybe, just maybe, there may be some kind of a systematic way to organize these elements. And uh, one big question is, how? Now, how do we arrange them? A logical way to begin grouping the elements together was by their chemical properties. In other words, putting elements in separate groups based on how they reacted with other elements. In 1829, no, we have the very first no, avatar, the, the element, element master, sorry lang. Now we have Johann Dobriner. So he placed various elements into groups called triads. That's why his arrangement was called the law of triads. Now he was not an illegal uh, gangster Baka pag narinig niyo yung triad, iniisip niya yung mga terorista sa uh, ibang bansa. No? The law of triads uh, is explained in this particular uh, slide. So kindly look at these uh, alkali formers, so our metals. We have here lithium, uh, sodium, and potassium. So triads, according to Johann Dobriner, were based on both physical as well as chemical properties. He found out that the atomic masses of these three elements as well as other triads formed a unique pattern. So bear with me, we'll have a little math. When the atomic masses of lithium and potassium were averaged together, so that's lithium 7 and potassium 39, if we add them, that would be 46, and we divide it by 3, huh? Guess what? That would be 23, the atomic mass of your sodium. So these three elements also displayed similar chemical reactions, such as vigorously reacting with the members of another triad. On the other side of the slide, you know, the salt formers, you have the chlorine, bromine, and iodine with different their respective atomic masses, of course. So here, if we add chlorine and iodine, it's 35.5 plus 127. That would be, put out your calculator. <laughs> Sige, i-mental natin. 5, 2, carry 1. That would be 162.5. And you divide it by 2 to get the average. That would be 81. No, Roughly, the atomic mass of our bromine uh, this was a very good and very great discovery of Johann Dobriner and this paved way to the future ideas however with of course your very first discovery there's always a limitation scientists questioned the law of triad because some elements no a number of elements cannot be classified in this way so, parang habang ina-arrange na to, parang nagtotong it's kung marunong ka. May mga tryo ka, may mga uh, buo ka, pero merong mga naiiwan sa deck of cards mo. So, imagine these elements as deck of cards. We have triple king, we have our triple queen, 
Pero we have left with one Zack, one Ace, one Dos. No? Hopefully you can relate with that card uh, uh, analogy. So this one was uh, ignored, no? or not really ignored. It was a good uh, milestone, but it was not fully accepted. So uh, another scientist by the name Alexandre Beguar de Chonchorfois. No? He, he, uh, he proposed the v telluri or the telluric helix. So, ano naman yung ginawa niya? So, si Alexandre Beguar de Chonchorfois, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, arranged the elements in a cylindrical manner. No? Uh, he created a cylinder and from the top, he arranged it in increasing atomic weight. Uh, with the heavier would be at the bottom, and the lightest element would be at the top. Now, if you can see, we have here the hydrogen, followed by lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and so on and so forth. And it was called the telluric helix because the middle element was tellurium. However, similar with Johan Dobriner, there were missing elements, and this was uh, a critic because it was based on a geological uh, uh, perspective, you know, a geology in particular, that the elements were from the earth, and the earth is rotating, and the earth is seemingly close to cylindrical. Kaya ganito daw yung paka-arrange. No? It's a rotation of elements. So it was not, again, uh, accepted by the people. You know? Mapili ang mga tao. Then here comes uh, an English chemist, no? Si John Newlands. Ba, uh, kung saan ang mga lugar ay bago, ay mga lupa ay bago. <laughs> Pan intended. <laughs> Nagtawa naman kayo kasi ang dami nang bumagyong dumaan. Sige, wala pa rin kaming wifi. <laughs> Char. Anyways, uh, si English chemist John Newlands naman uh, he arranged the elements in increasing order of atomic mass. Take note. Uh, again, scientists are just copying ideas and then revising them. So again, as I've been reminding you, you'll be copying activities from your classmate. Don't copy everything. Modify it and improve it so that it will be named after you. So he noticed, after arranging them in increasing order of atomic mass, he noticed that every eight element exhibited similar properties. No? This was a very outstand, astounding uh, discovery. He called this discovery or, or this kind of relationship where in every eight element no, there's a similar property. He called it the law of octaves. No? Octaves are in music. No, I'm not that good but it's, it's the eight. Eight tone? <laughs> Anyways, and unfortunately, no, ito yung pinaka problema from Johan to Alexander and to, to John Newlands, there are still elements that were missing. And the law did not seem to hold for elements that were heavier than calcium. Parang, in short, sa una lang magaling. Diba? Yung first two sets of elements niya, yung eight elements are uh, similar, ang properties. Pero sa baba na, hindi na, no? It does not make sense, no? It does not feel right. Because there were missing, missing, there were missing elements. And the law did not seem to hold for elements uh, heavier than calcium. So, the period will stop. But this was the first, you know, uh, jump to the periodic table of elements, no? That Every eight, no, that's what we call a period. No, there's a counting, there's a fixed number, or there's a rotation, there's a pattern, no, the periodic, every eight. But unfortunately, with people knowing nothing, Jon Snow ignored his work. No, and some books would say he was even ridiculed by the scientific community in his day. Uh, it was not until years after. Know that more extensive periodic table effort would gain much 
greater acceptance and the pioneering work of Mr. John Newlands would be appreciated. So, yan, medyo sewing palad si John Newlands. So, here comes uh, Julius Lothar Mayer. So, he arranged the periodic table in similar way, you know, atomic weights. But he created uh, a sort of X and Y axis, no, the abscissa and the ordinate, tama ba? Where he tried to arrange them in table no, so that he will see the trends. But again, there were missing links and so on and so forth. Until such time, no, uh, his colleague, no, Dimitri Ivanovich Mendeleev, or Mendeleev, came into the picture. So maybe you're all familiar with the name, no, Mendeleev. Uh, si Mendeleev, no, just to give you a short background, to inspire you probably, or yan, sana may inspire kayo. Imagine yourself in a family, a very big family. Probably there were there he has twelve siblings, thirteen. His father was a professor in a university. Uh, I forget the name of the university. And then, yan. Uh, unfortunately, you no. Know, after some years, when Mendeley was still in high school, his father went blind, uh, and. He was, of course, rejected or he stopped teaching in the university. And eventually, a few years after, his father died. So his mother was left alone to raise Mendeleev and his brothers and sisters. So he opened, her mother in particular, he opened an abandoned glass factory near their house. And yeah, and after one year, the factory burned to the ground. No? So, his brothers and sisters uh, married, probably, they went no? all are all their own ways. So, men believe, parang siya yung, ano, medyo pursigido mag-aral in their, uh, in their family. Her mother, seeing the potential in Dimitri men believe, she read, you know, well, according to some books and documentary, she packed some things of Mendeleev and they ride you know, horse for several mile, miles. He went, they went to Moscow University and begged if Mendeleev could be a scholar in the university. Uh, they were rejected. So her mother, again, rode a horse with him to the university where his father thought, once thought, and then eventually, probably with some Russian persistence, because Russian are very strong people, they pronounce as a Z, and they are, are like this, you know? they are very strong, Mendeleev, or maybe because of the struggle they had, they were pitied, you know? nonetheless, Mendeleev was accepted in the university, so if you are Mendeleev, with that life seemingly going all wrong, what could have you, uh, what what will you do with the opportunity given to you by the university either you waste it and enjoy uh, a happy go lucky college life or you'll maximize the opportunity and do something great in your life and that what that's what uh, Dimitri Mendeleev did so, inspiring right hopefully so no he created, or he 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 didn't actually create the periodic table of elements. It was the combined idea from Johann Dobriner, or even from his colleague Julius Lothar Mayer, that he arranged the periodic table of elements. And what's interesting here is that he realized that uh, the previous arrangements were almost correct. However, may mga gaps in the periodic table and he simply realized that these gaps are intended for elements that are yet to be discovered meaning na mo problema sila sa pag-arrange nito according to atomic weight the properties the similarities 
is because there are still elements that are not yet discovered. So, ito lang yung solution niya. So, limbawa, can you see here the table? There are white holes. No? These are the gaps in his first periodic table. He simply said that uh, we do not force to fill these gaps by moving the elements to the left. But rather, we skip this part because there are elements intended to be here. And guess what? No, When other scientists from other countries discovered some elements and then presented the elements to the UPAC, you know, the, the chemistry world, Dimitri Mendeleev would recheck his findings. And when he realized that the finding of that element of the other scientist is does not match his findings, Mendeleev would argue that his finding is wrong. Now imagine me just creating this table and predicting uh, an, an undiscovered element against a scientist who've been probably searching his whole life for that particular element and creating the data for what he have seen, what he have touched, what he have discovered, tapos he argue ko lang, o ako si Mendeleev, na mali. Diba? Who would have thought that Mendeleev was right and the scientist was actually wrong? Diba? That's how amazing the periodic table of elements of Mendeleev was. He predicted all the uh, unfound elements, no, but uh, specifically until uranium. So if you'll notice here, until uranium lang siya because these are all, the all natural occurring elements no? from 92. The rest are just scientifically made. No? They are just made inside the laboratory, synthetically made in particular. No? All the elements after uranium were discovered created inside the lab by heating nucleus to nucleus, problems, problems, etc., etc. But anyways, uh, this was no, the Earth, uh, the, the, the amazing and the astounding discovery of Dimitri Mendeleev, arranging the periodic table of elements in such a way that there are gaps for the elements that are yet to be discovered and until now his discovery his prediction was spot on that's why he was called the father of the modern periodic table of elements i don't know if he's the father of modern chemistry i don't have the internet to verify that but he was you no know, coined and the story was told to me by our teacher in high school because that was our section in the third year, you know, Mendeleev. So that's how important this periodic table of element is. You know? I keep telling my students na, oh, ayon yung bilhin or iniiwan iwan yung lagi. But that's the most important periodic uh, table, rather, in the universe. And it took a lot of uh, blood, a lot of sweat, a lot of mind-blowing mind scratching bird scratching uh, beard scratching uh, time just to arrive at this wonderful discovery so again hopefully you'll appreciate the periodic table so this was the foundation of the periodic trends and eventually you now we have some people so william ramsey he discovered the noble gases uh, the argon helium neon krypton and xenon and yeah, and it's a new group in the periodic table. We have also Henry Mosley. He was able to measure the atomic number when he fired the newly developed X-ray gun at samples of elements and measure the wavelength. So he was the one who discovered the atomic number of elements. And then we have Glenn Seaborg. He discovered all the transuranic elements. From 94 to 102, meaning these are what I've been saying a while ago, the synthetic elements. And he reconfigured the periodic table by placing the actinide series below the lanthanide series. So, ito na yung mga uh, na-discover nila inside the laboratory. So, element 106 was named Cyborgium as a tribute to his contribution in the field of chemistry. 
And it is the only element to be named after a living person. So that's Glenn Seaborg. So that's it for the history of the periodic table elements. Now, we are going to talk about the periodic trend. So by the way, uh, ito lang yung nakikita natin. Uh, I, I think I've said this uh, in some lessons already. This is the periodic table for convenience. The real periodic table looks like this one. Now, the lanthanide and actinide series are connected after barium and radium or radium. Uh, pero, syempre, magiging super mahaba ang periodic table natin. Kaya, kinat nila tong dalawang part, the purple and the pink. If that's correct. Tapos dito, magkaiba ng kulay. So that uh, they can place it here. Some would prefer an arrow pointing to the lanthanide and actinide series. Some will just fill in the graph Yung parang sa calendar lang. Ayan. And again, the original uh, periodic table is uh, circular or spherical so that the lithium, the group 1, would be connected to group 7 so that they'll uh, easily, uh, we can easily find which they are most uh, compatible to or compatible with. So at this juncture, now we are going to talk about our periodic trends all right the trends now we'll still talk about the periodic table and how amazing it is <laughs>